Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about magic cards are too expensive for its main player base. And also I'm going to say, I'm just going to go ahead and say I don't want to win magic games because I have more money. Or like, not because I have more money. Because in a lot of cases people with a lot of these magic cards actually don't have more money. They just spend a lot more of their uh, income on magic cards and magic cards only. So I have other hobbies that are very expensive like conventions, convention going, which is kind of just like reunions with friends from all over. Um, video gaming is a big hobby of mine which I have a ton of expensive video games or I guess like the term would be uncommon video games. And as well as like other card games, Wise Vanguard, um, anime, I buy a lot of anime figures and merchandise, but that's kind of related to conventions because that's the only time I can ever see that merchandise. But today, the pricing of Magic cards is so crazy to me um, because it prevents players who are very good at Magic and who want to play Magic and who love Magic from playing the game that they want to play. And the reason I say this is a lot of you in the comments below will say, oh, play the rogue deck, play the mono red budget deck. Eventually, yeah, you can play those decks, but the option not to play them, the option to play a deck with a Tomogoy, with Liliana's, with Snapcaster Mage, who's above $50 now, that's very important. Um, having the option, whether you choose or not to, to play the best cards, so you can have the highest potential of winning, that is very important. And a lot of that gets lost. A lot of people lose that, I, they lose that concept that um, in poker and in many other games, everyone is on the equal footing. So in, in soccer, you wouldn't have, um, at least like if you're, I'm not talking about like professional soccer where some teams have more money than other teams, but in like intramural soccer, it's not like, oh, okay, wh whoever paid the most to the uh, soccer confederation, whatever it's called, gets like, starts with an extra goal or something, or you get to choose the ball. I don't know, with some type of event, or you get like the better, um, and especially in soccer where your equipment, your cleats, and then your stuff, it doesn't really matter that much. But in Magic, if you spend money on magic cards, you can build a good deck even if you suck at magic. Playing a turn two Tamagoy followed by a turn, next turn Liliana the Veil, I mean, it doesn't take a good magic player to win, especially if you're playing against a person who's playing a bad, you know, a budget, a budget deck. I'm not making fun of budget decks, I'm not making fun of rogue decks, I just want you to understand there's a difference between what, like, having to play the deck because you cannot afford the best cards and choosing to play, play the deck and having the option to play with the other cards. Maybe Tomogorf is a good card for your mono green elf deck. Maybe it's not, but having that option of, for you to decide, should I have them or should I not have them? Very important in my opinion. And Back in my day, like magic cards were not expensive. Like I've said this many times, but when Black Lotus hit 20 bucks, a lot of articles were like written like in Inquest and Scry and we had like a duelist or there was a ton of like magic magazines back in the day, actually, now that I think about it. Um, crazy, crazy to me that, you know, a card, a piece of cardboard was 20 bucks back then. Crazy. That same piece of cardboard is now $20,000. Did that piece of cardboard some type, some kind of uh, evolve, like an EV into like a Sylveon and became more valuable? No. Piece of cardboard is exactly, actually, if it's exactly the same as you opened it, it's worth way more than if you actually used the card. And isn't that crazy? That the card meant to be used is actually worth more if it was never used, ever. The most, the most powerful card in Magic, think about that for a moment. The most powerful card in Magic, every time you played it, every time you put it in the sleeve, every time that you touched it, it got less valuable every time you played with it. Then a card that 
you just, oh, hey, cool, Black Lotus, I'm going to keep it forever in my safe and, like, put, like, layers of protection and get it graded and stuff. That's where the game is right now. Like, that's where, the, that's where Vintage is. That's where Legacy is. I hope Modern never gets to the point where, I mean, it's actually at the point already. Like, people do this with standard cards where people are grading, like, stand, have you seen, like, the most ridiculous cards get graded? Like, I've seen a Seance get graded. It wasn't even graded a 10, it was graded like a 9. Like people grading their cards don't make any sense to me. You're supposed to play with them. Uh, people are grading like Lotuses, people are grading, um, even worse, they're grading uh, dual lands so people cannot play with the dual lands. They're in these giant cases and people don't take them out because it devalues them and that's where we are. And I feel really sad about that. Like I, it does make me extremely sad to know a ton of these good, great cards invaluable cards, extremely hard to find cards, cards that will never, I don't want to say never, but are unlikely to be reprinted, or in these giant cases, and that's where we are. And giant plastic holders, because they have more value that way, and I could have never, no one could have imagined that 20 years ago, and if you told me that you would have, like, oh yeah, of course that would have been me, you would have been rich by now, because you're going to purchase every Black Lotus you wanted for 20 bucks. Honestly, you could uh, and you could purchase dual lands for like 10 bucks. Revised dual lands when they rotated out of whatever the standard, it wasn't called standard at the time, it was called something else. Uh, rotated out, you could get them for five bucks easily. And the underground C at that time wasn't more valuable than you know the other ones, right? They were all about the same price. Um, but now it's like $300, $400, who knows what the underground C will be like two years from now. Crazy. Like, I feel like the pricing is a little outrageous. Um, I feel like it takes away from the game. Um, it takes away from the playability of the game when, you know, just frankly to say, if you're putting these cards, if you're giving people incentive to put cards in the BGS, you know, grade containers, then those cards would never be played. How can they be played? How are you going to put that into your deck? Um, at that point, you're only really caring about how much money it's going to be worth in the future and that's a very sad state of the game um, it makes me sad as someone who has collected cards um, I always enjoy a good reprint uh, when Basana like I've told this story so many times when Basana one of my favorite cards to collect was reprinted the only question I had was oh cool season foil when Jackal Pup one again one of my favorite cards is not even that valuable and not even that good anymore uh, was in fire and lightning. I was like, oh my gosh, it's in foil. Um, so it does make me a little sad as a collector to see like where we are going, as um, you know how expensive cards are now, and you know just it, it makes me very upset to see uh, graded cards. Uh, especially with cards like Dual Lands, which re revised Dual Lands, which there's a ton of, and the only reason they're valuable is because they're played so often, not because they are extremely collector's items. Because Dual Lands, I don't know if you know this from revised, were way more common than Unlimited. So I can see Unlimited maybe in a case, I don't even know, I can't even see that, but having cards that people need to play with um, and taking them away from the market, being in a case, or just having a ton of them yourself and not using them uh, does make me very sad. Bye guys.